My first experience in classroom at, when I got to Rice uh, in 1987 was to go to Dennis Houston's class. And he had just won a prestigious teaching award, so I was a little bit nervous going in. Uh, number one, I wanted to do a good job for our publications, but I was also intimidated by this, uh, this man who uh, had long blonde hair and was a little animated, to say the least. But in fact, does anybody know about the relationship between Polynices and Antiochus, except for the fact that they're brothers? The class he was teaching was a Shakespeare class, so I thought, how am I going to make these students look interested in a Shakespeare class? I didn't do it! Didn't see who did it! Be fair, don't take it out on me! I didn't do it! He entered the classroom and everybody just came alive. And true of Sophocles' major characters, characters who are incredibly strong-willed, stubborn, and uncompromising, and they get angry in a hurry, sort of like Dennis, okay? It's definitely not what I was expecting in, in an intro to lit class. It was way more interesting than I expected. And I'm about to be this month 72. This is the 43rd year I've started a class at Rice. The best thing about teaching at Rice is how wonderful the students are, how, how carefully they prepare, how much they care about what they're doing and what you're doing, how hard they listen to one another and to you, and how much they care about learning to write better. What does he say about Polynices? Molly, Kathy, Gretchen, Ricky, Jenny, uh, David. A tragic hero. How? You got to be on your toes because he'll he'll call on anybody uh, about anything in the book. So if you haven't read, it, uh, you know, puts you on the spot. So you definitely have to do your homework. What I feel is really important is that they, from the very beginning, get used to talking in class and don't feel uneasy about having ideas which are different from the person who's sitting next to them or different from mine. And so what I try to do in the first few weeks of the semester is call on everybody in class. Now I tell them I'm going to call on them arbitrarily without warning and I want them to be ready. And, and that what I've discovered is that when they give me an answer, I try really hard to make positive things of it, particularly in the early weeks of the class, so that they feel as if what they say, first of all, matters, and secondly, turns out to ha be important, as it almost always is. Well, Dennis is, uh, has won so many awards for teaching, uh, both local and national. It's, it's actually hard to list them all. You know, he's, he's been invited to the White House uh, because of his teaching. He's been written up in Newsweek magazine because of his teaching. It's easy to say that somebody like Dennis is a legend, but He's not just a local legend. He's not just a legendary teacher at Rice. He's actually on the national level somebody who's regarded as one of the best teachers in the country. What defines a great university is its quality of teaching, its quality of research. Nothing is better than what we can do for our students and what we can do for knowledge generally as we increase knowledge through research and then share that knowledge through teaching and through publications. Dennis is one of those very, very unusual teachers who is superb at sharing knowledge and getting students excited about knowledge. I think a course with Dennis is not simply a course that ends at a certain time. It's the beginning of a dialogue uh, that lasts a lifetime. Uh, students remember I, I, him so fondly, I think, precisely because it was the beginning of something and not the end of something. The thing I most hope I've accomplished is that they had fun. All right, I want them, I, they may not remember what kinds of things we said about Oedipus 20 years from now, but if things have gone right in the class, they'll remember that when they were there, it felt exciting. Another thing I want them to feel is that I want them to feel as if they now write better than they did when they came in there. Then he begins to get, mm, like most of us when we get crossed. Maybe the most important thing, but the thing that happens least often, but I do tell them this, is that you hope with a few of them you actually change their lives. You get them to think in different ways. Some of them change their minds about what they want to do with their lives. Some of them change their minds about how they feel about something like a Shakespeare play. And those kinds of things are very important to me because I want them to think 
that the chorus was something that they, they will remember the feeling of the rest of their lives. I'm letting, I'm letting Ricky go and tell him. When I was younger, people were forced to retire at age 67 or 70. And I thought 67 is the right age because I like to do other things. I like to ski and I like to read and I like to watch movies and I like to play golf. And as I got closer to 67, I thought, I don't like to do anything as well as I like to teach. Nothing is finally as much fun for me as being in front of a class. And uh, years and years ago when I was at Yale, I was taught by a guy by the name of Harold Bloom, who's still teaching at Yale and who has written about 27 books. And it was absolutely brilliant. And he said, I start my 50th year at Yale this year and they're gonna to have to carry me out in a body bag and I'll probably still be talking. And I don't know whether I feel quite the way Bloom feels, but I'm gonna do it as long as I can do it and love it and think the students love it.